Good. Good morning, and thank you for coming. We are going to talk a little bit about Fusion Basic this morning. And let me go ahead and put my contact information up here for you. Maybe. It only wants to show on the TV, not my computer. So I have to kind of drive upside down and backwards. <laughs> While it's taking a moment to load, my name is Marilyn Maxwell and I'm with HAR. You may encounter me more than once in your real estate career. Um, I teach mostly outside of HAR. It's rare that you'll find me teaching a classroom at the HAR locations because I primarily go from brokerage office to brokerage office to brokerage office like I am today. So um, I think it makes a lot uh, a lot more convenient sometimes if I come to you than y'all having to drive somewhere else. So thank y'all again for showing up at your own office and for providing me coffee. I'm a happy girl. <laughs> so um, if you've got questions along the way, feel free to ask those. But also here's my contact information. <clears throat> Once we part ways today, you're welcome to email or call. Again, I teach quite often. I'm in a different place every day or in my car driving to the place. So if you'll email me, that'll work just a little bit better for me. But I'll always call you back also if you um, call. Just kind of be forewarned. You're going to get my voicemail most likely. 288, yes, ma'am. I can make that even a little bit bigger for you. Oh, that'd be great. Is that better? I appreciate that. Is that good? <clears throat> like I say, though, once uh, we're getting, uh, once we're into the class today, just feel free to ask questions along the way if you have questions. And also, I heard some of the, the talk before, just to kind of make my public service announcements, all my housekeeping, I call it. Uh, Fusion does work in, it's multi-browser compatible, they say, so it works in Firefox or Chrome or Safari on a Mac or those types of things. And just last week, Market Links was able to update their programming on the backside of Tempo. So Tempo is now multi-browser compatible. So you can also use that one with Firefox or Chrome or Safari or whatever you want. Oh, like if you have an iPad. It, it works in Internet Explorer as well. What about an iPad? It's not iPad compatible just yet. Fusion is, but Tempo uh, programming still needs to go a little bit further right, before it'll work with the... Those. Fusion That's is. Yes. Thank you. you do need to... I'm not supposed to promote it, but <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a little app called <laughs> Fusion Experience that you'll need to download for your iPad. Fusion experience. experience. Yes. Doesn't that make it sound exciting? Mm -hmm. It's going to be... E X or with an X? E X. Fusion experience, if you want to run Fusion on your iPad. What about your iPhone? Same thing? Same thing. Yep. Any i thing, you'll need that little app for. If you've got a Droid tablet or a Windows tablet, you just open the browser and go straight into Fusion you know, without needing to download anything else. Okay. All right. And as Frank mentioned at the Beginning, we do have a choice for you here. So when you first <laughs> log in to HAR, you'll see your two options. So all I did was log into HAR. This is what we call our dashboard page or the home page. First thing you see when you log in. Top right corner there, you've got a link for Tempo or Fusion. So you can go to straight to Fusion from right there. Okay. How many of you have used Fusion? I count if you have opened it and looked at it and gone, yeah, I'll try that later and closed it. I give you credit for that. Okay, so that's good. And I know that you two ladies are brand new, so welcome. And uh, probably your first experience so far in uh, using Fusion. So hopefully today we'll teach you, we'll learn you a couple of things that'll make it a lot easier for you. Everything seems to be taking its own sweet time to load. So. Give me plenty of time to drink my coffee in between. Um, if you need your MCE hours for today, this is a 9 to 12 class. We've got three hours of credit associated. So if you need the credit, be sure that you sign this. And I will be nice and give you break, uh, a break along the way, maybe more than one. Um, so if you'll go ahead and fill it out, Truck's really particular about getting what they want out of you. So if you'll put last name, first name, signature, and license, that'll be your official getting credit form there. All right, so if you haven't already, go ahead and open the internet and then open up Fusion. If you get a, kind of a welcome message or you need to agree to the terms of something, if you haven't used it 
um, recently. You probably have a, a new term of terms of agreement that you'll have to acknowledge before it lets you go on to the next step. And then you should get a screen that looks something like this once you're logged in. better standing. Is everybody good? So far so good. So far so good. My theory is if I don't hear anything out of you, I presume you're fine. So if you need anything at all, just let me know. <laughs> um, it, it is case sensitive sometimes, yes. So that's the one thing I can't help you much more than that with, is I don't know what your password is. I always say that's the hardest part of real estate, it's learning all your logins. <laughs> Would you like to use one computer? Would that be All right, so once you're into Fusion, like I say, you should see a screen that looks something like this. Mine will look a slight bit different because every time I teach, I move the, the boxes around just a little bit. Uh, the widgets or gadgets, they call them, on this screen. Again, might be in a slightly different order than yours, but yours are probably there somewhere. Normally what you do is you log into HAR, you jump straight into MLS, and then you jump straight to searching for property, right? You don't pause on this screen necessarily. So I'm gonna force you to pause on this screen today and kind of show you some of the things that are available for you. That can kind of help streamline some stuff. Again, you probably have this system information somewhere on your screen. You can minimize or close a lot of these windows or move them around. So if you wanted to minimize, not that you don't want to see this amazing system information, but just as an example, you could minimize that. Also, if you click and hold on the black and white title bar, you can drag these around. So again, the widgets that you'll use the most potentially, you could put up at the top or things that you're not interested in, you could simply click the X and remove those from your screen. So that's an option to kind of customize this page and have as clean a slate as you might want. And then up here in the upper right where it says customize this page, if you closed a box and you want to get it back later, you just simply go to customize the page and decide which of the widgets or gadgets that you want to show up on that page. Just check the little box to turn it back on. Okay. So the first of the widgets I'm going to talk about is today's hot sheet. Scoot that up a little bit. So again, you may have to scroll up and down just a bit if you're on your computer to find your today's hot sheet. Does anybody know what a hot sheet is? Use the hot sheets at all? Maybe? Okay, so a hot sheet is whatever has happened since midnight to last night or this morning or however you want to word that. So today specifically. So under um, this count right here, my numbers are going to be a little bit different because I've got this customized a bit. But where it says new listings and the number one off to the right, that means one new listing has come on the market in the res, our residential single family property class since midnight last night in whatever MLS area I'm searching for, okay? The system default is all of everything. So every single MLS area will be represented there until you change it to look at something else. So again, your number is probably a little higher count than I have right now. But you can see here we've got res, residential single family, down into uh, the condos or townhomes, acreage, high rise, rental, t all of those different property classes are represented here throughout the list. So. You've got the different property classes and then whatever different event that might have occurred. A price change, gone into a different status, came back on the market, brand new listing, whatever might have happened. So kind of a real quick. All of the areas? All of the areas by default, yes. If you go up to right here where it says change my criteria just on that box, good morning, you'll see that you can kind of tweak that a little bit. Can you set up multiple hot sheets if you wanted to monitor different areas to see the results separately? No, but thank you for asking. <laughs> hot sheet is just real simple, one area, or one, one at a time. You can switch it all the time, but you can't have multiple running at the same time. So unfortunately, no. So once you click change your criteria at the top, it is kind of a broad brush stroke kind of report. So whatever event, again, your pendings or back on market or whatever it might be, whatever property class you're interested in, 
There are only select few high rises, for instance, right around this area, so maybe that's not of interest. Um, in Fusion, you click once to highlight and select something. You click it again to unselect it. So if it's blue, it is being used as criteria. If it's not, then it's not. So you click it once to just take it out of the mix. So if I didn't want to look at townhomes and multifamily in that report, then now I'm not. That's not included. Okay. So again, it'll default to all. So that'll be selected initially. And then initially, it has every MLS <coughs> status in there. But that, of course, is huge, right? Everything from uh, north of Kingwood to Galveston and Katy and everything all in between, that's an awful lot to track. So you can kind of narrow this down a bit. As you can see, I've got just 12 and 13 in there from the last time I taught a class. That's where I was standing, so we looked there. If you click off to the far right, only select few of you will know what this is. But in the olden days, we had a little pink eraser in school. That was like the best day ever, every year for me when I got my little pink eraser. So that's what that little uh, symbol is off to the right. Your pink eraser is to clear that field. Initially, it's going to have every single MLS area in it. So I could click in there and hit my backspace or delete button, but that's going to take an awful long time. So again, if you just click that, clears out the field. You can either manually type the MLS area or area numbers that you want to search in, or you can do like we just did a second ago with the drop down and select them from the list. So what area am I standing in right now? 15, right? Shall we look at anything else? 15 and something else or just only area 15 right now? 14 also, so then I would do comma 14. So I've got both those selected. Doesn't matter that they're in different order, not numerical order, doesn't matter, because they're both in there, okay? So then once I've made my selections, I'll click save search, which basically always means save criteria. And anytime you're saving a search, you can't really ever save results. You only ever save criteria. So we're saving that. Okay. Made it a little angry. So here's your biggest rule of thumb for fusion. Don't use the back arrow. Up here in your browser, if you're in Chrome, it's kind of grayed out. So I couldn't accidentally even do it if I tried. But in Firefox or Internet Explorer or whatever, the, that back arrow will be there. If you use the browser's back arrow, it'll knock you out. It gets very angry at you and it punishes you by trying to have to log back in like three or four different times. You don't use the back arrow at all. You'll use these little tabs across the top to navigate through Fusion, okay? So that's your biggest learning curve. I always say it's not hard to learn Fusion, it's just really hard to unlearn tempo. Because for a decade and a half, I was doing it the tempo way. So it, it, if I have to teach tempo and Fusion in the same day, sometimes it takes me just a few minutes standing up in front of everybody to, to remember the tempo way versus the Fusion way. So it's a, definitely a learning way, curve. Stop tempo and go Fusion <coughs> all the way. Nothing lasts forever, but there are no plans to get rid of either Tempo or Fusion. They'll run side by side. We just signed a multi-year contract with the vendor for both. So at least three plus years, we're, we're locked into both Fusion and Tempo. Something else more amazing comes along. We may add that in and you'll have a third choice of MLSs. Who knows? So uh, we always just try to find the most um, beneficial product we can that works best for our members. So. Um, no plans to get rid of either. There's unfortunate rumors that one day one's going away and the next day the other's going away. We can't ki kind of squelch, squelch those rumors. But. So now that I've got my criteria saved, I'm going to navigate with my tab. So I'm going to go back home. Anytime you want to get back to that first page, that's your home page. So you can click tab, just like Dorothy. Just go back home whenever you need to. Okay. So home tab across the top. And then one little tweak we have to do here, this little very high tech stuff here, the little swoopy arrows, the two little arrows that point at each other, that's our refresh. So since I modified my criteria, I just want to refresh it real quickly to have it catch up to me as opposed to waiting for 20 minutes or so for it to automatically sync or having to close Fusion and open it completely again. <coughs> the home tab across the top here, the home menu. Home tab. <laughs> we will use the tab key later. We're just not to that point yet. That's re refresh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So if you change the criteria at all, you'll just need to refresh the widget 
oh, the sentences I have to say, refresh your widget um, to make that immediately show up. So now you can see my numbers, my counts are a little bit different. I don't have any new listings as of this morning in the single family or residential single family property class, but I have three price changes. I've got one that's changed to pending, two that have expired, and so on and so forth. Again, you've got all your different property classes represented down the row here or down the column. Okay. One thing that's, did you a question? I, I did, sorry. That's no, fine. Um, I know you can select by area. Can you also select by zip or city? Um, the answer to your question is yes, but uh, in the initial setup of the widget, the basic, all you have is MLS area. Okay. In the Fusion Advanced class, they show you how you can kind of use a custom search and apply it, kind of combine it with the hot sheet. So you have the since midnight last night uh, layer combined with that custom search. So you could drill down to a subdivision or zip code or something like that. I do. So I can come that. back. Okay. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, not hard, just a little different, again, than probably what you're used to. So. <laughs> I can come back and teach this one again also. I'll come back as many times as y'all invite me and teach you whatever you'd like. So. No rush either way. Uh, I was going to mention real quickly about expired listings. Not many of you seem to use the hot sheet report when I asked about that. Uh, the tempo version, just kind of as a ver dis disclaimer or sort of like pros and cons differences, uh, the tempo today's hot sheet report, same thing, since midnight last night, whatever has occurred. The one small difference is whenever you're looking at the expireds in tempos hot sheet, it's whatever has expired since midnight last night, but in tempo it could potentially have gone back into another status already. So it could have expired at 12.01, but the listing agent already put it back in active. So when you run the hot sheet, you see properties that are currently in the active status. In Fusion, you only ever see what is currently expired. So it had to have expired since midnight last night and still be expired. So there isn't that sort of danger of accidentally marketing to a listing that's already may it been made active again. Yes, sir. Okay, so if there is some um, activity related to the property <coughs> at me. 6 p.m., I'm not going to see it on the hot sheet the next morning because it's only from midnight forward. Correct. Okay? Correct. And I also didn't see it the day before because it hadn't happened after midnight. Correct. Depending on whether you checked it several times throughout the day or not. I guess that's the point. You can't just check your hot sheet once a day. You've, you've got to check it maybe at the end of the day. If you want a couple to of times a day potentially even. That's right. Okay. If you want to use that. There are some things like auto notification that you can set up where okay. that's another class. Okay. Um, okay, it's like one big commercial up here, isn't it? But you can set up, um, you know, like you were saying, a certain zip code or subdivision or something like that and kind of put yourself in as the quote unquote client and it'll email you real time updates. So like the minute a new listing, price change, status change, yes. that type of notification can happen with auto notification. Hot sheet is just kind of sitting there waiting for you to go look at it. Right. No alerts are being sent out to you. So. Pros and cons, I kind of, uh, by the end of the day, my son is so tired of hearing me say that. Stop. So you'll hear that a lot today. Pros and cons. <laughs> uh, when you do auto uh, alerts yes. on your properties and they were, they were put in on uh, tempo, does Fusion pick them up and give you the option of that? Or does it do that um, so it's instant, not waiting to midnight? Yes. Um, let me make sure I'm answering all the questions and then maybe some more. Uh, if you use Tempo, you set your people up in Tempo, you set the auto notifications up there, so they're receiving notifications through Tempo currently. So what Fusion will do is it copies your people in your searches. So if I have saved prospects um, or contacts and then I have saved custom searches, they do copy into Fusion, but it does not automatically start delivering notifications through Fusion you have the option to turn on that feature if you'd like and switch from Tempo to Fusion or vice versa. Sort of, yes. It's the same notification, it's the same property database. You put properties in one place. Technically you go through Tempo and you add your new listings, right? And then it feeds the listing database out to Tempo and then every 20 minutes we're syncing to Fusion. So you'll have the same, essentially the same property database coming from one central location. So if you flip on the notifications through Fusion, 
the difference in the type of notification, Fusion is ASAP, real time. So the moment a new listing, price change, status change, new photos added for the first time, the, the moment those things occur in MLS, if you've got the notifications turned on through Fusion, your client gets a notification right away. Tempo system is only running searches and sending out alerts once a day, between about two-ish and four-ish in the morning. So if a new listing came on the market at like 10 in the morning, they don't get that notification until the very next day, unless you've got them enabled in Fusion. So you have to change now Fusion does it right away? I mean, Fusion it does it. A few minutes. Worst case scenario, it's a 20 minute lag, right? Yeah. But normally it's, it's, so that's only if you turn it on. it's only if you enable the notifications through Fusion. That's well, right. <laughs> no, we, we still can't go into Fusion and input our listings, correct? Is that, is that what you're saying? You can use Fusion, but technically the database that you're putting it into okay. is the backside of HA, uh, Tempo. So you can open Fusion, click Add, Edit, but once I click Add, Edit right here to put the listing in, it's opening that same Tempo uh, interface so that I've been using. Put the in Fusion. If you would like, okay. yes. Technically it's Tempo, but just for consistency's sake, if you're wanting to switch to Fusion and just kind of jump in both feet, that way all of your habits are formed in the Fusion system. And then technically, like you might recognize this, my Tempo users as you know the Tempo interface. So you would add a listing exactly the same. Eventually, we will have um, in Fusion, because that is an issue. Yep, so you just hover on Search, click Add Edit, and you'll be right there. Or hover on Home and click Add Edit. Either way. Add edit, and that's where you, in Fusion, mm -hmm. you add your listings. Correct. Pictures, all of that. Anything that you would normally do. It works exactly like it. It is the exact same tempo screen you're used to seeing. That's right. Because I don't think that, last time I took this class, I don't think that was on. The availability was there, but it's confusing because it's technically tempo you're going into. So it kind of makes it seem like you can't really. Um, you kind of sort of are adding a listing through Fusion, but not really, right? Because you're going through Fusion to get to Tempo. So that's what I say. Yes, but is sort of the answer to your question. All right. So any other questions? Y'all are doing excellent questions. All right. So that's our hot sheet. Um, again, since midnight last night, just a real quick view. And like he said, you do need to kind of check it multiple times throughout the day. If you're going to rely on the hot sheet for your source of information, then you kind of want to get in the habit of checking it a couple of times a day. To see the details on the specific properties, you just click anywhere on the row for that information. So in this case, there's three price changes. If I click there, it'll open a page that shows the details of all three of those properties. So it's just focusing only on those with the price changes at the moment. And we'll talk a little bit more about this results grid as we get further into the class. So just your little teaser there to sort of um, help you know what it's going to look like eventually. So now I need to get back to where I was. How do I get back to that first screen? Home, you got it, that's right. Again, it helps that Chrome blocks the back arrow for me so I can't accidentally um, learn that lesson the hard way again, because I did at first. Is that the first, is that what Washington likes the best? No, that's what Marilyn likes the best. Technically, I have no opinions in front of a class, but if I did, I might be a Chrome kind of gal. <laughs> okay. It's just my, you know, habit well, it's, for it's me. Yes, I don't. I don't do change that. Yeah, I do not do change well. Yes. Yep. I absolutely, totally understand. I'm not a big fan of change. So, if you are an Internet Explorer person or Firefox or Chrome or whatever, that's one of the the benefits is you can kind of stick with the thing that's most comfortable, at least in that regard. All right, so the next widget we're going to talk about is Inventory Watch. And again, you may have to scroll up and down for those of you who are on a computer, kind of look around your page a bit. I'm sure it's in a different order than mine is. And it should default to Personal. I hope someday you all have so many listings you need a little widget to keep track of how many active listings that you have. But practically, uh, that might not necessarily be what you do. This does help track those that you have participated in the sale of in the last six months. So that could have been your listing or someone else's listing and you represented the buyer side. So that's good for kind of tracking your production and so forth, the number of units closed and like that. And then also those about to expire in the next 14 days. Every time you get a listing, 
most likely it's going to have a completely different expiration date than every other listing that you get. So kind of keeping track of that is a little um, hairy sometimes, particularly, again, if you have so many listings that you need a little widget to help you track those. Um, it does email you and let you know. Uh, I believe it's seven days prior to the expiration date. lets you know it's going to expire, so you have that as well. But to kind of keep a running tally. And it would work very similar to this widget. We just are inactive at HAR when we are in front of you. We don't compete with you. So I have big fat zeros in all my reports right there because I don't have any active listings. Um, one of the best parts of this little widget, I think, is this right here, this My Office. So if you switch it from personal to My Office, this will show you the same type of report, but for the office level. How many of you take property calls? How many of you know every single active listing that the company has? Not so much, right? So this little widget puts anything that's active all in one place, whether it's a townhome or a rental or a high rise or whatever it might be, whatever price range, it's all in one place. And one of the, pardon? It's got different sections, actives, new listings, those that are impending, so forth. So you can go through and find, uh, they're separated out, but they're all there. Yeah, they're all in their own little section. You can also sort infusion, which is a huge benefit. So if someone says, well, I can tell it's on, I'm on Maple Street, but I can't make out the numbers on the house, you can sort alphabetically by street name and find whatever inventory this office has on Maple Street, for instance. You can sort by price, you can um, sort by square footage, key map number, days on market, anything at all. Okay, so that's kind of a, a nice benefit as well. So again, anything that you have that's active will kind of all be together there. So that makes it easy, particularly for um, property calls or prime it desk or whatever you might want to. It doesn't let you see them all. <coughs> It'll let you see any in those well, I'm individual I'm statuses. I do this for practical uses. I use, that's what I use this system for. What are you wanting to see? I want to know, I want to find it as fast as possible and that's what I'm trying to master. Okay, here where it says active listings, if you click that, anything that's active in your company will all be right there. So right here where it says pending, you got to go to the pendings or solds. Mm -hmm. But whereas if I go up to the address place, I can just put in the address and get filled Yes, if you want to search by a specific address instead, you can certainly do that. The widget here for inventory watch is focused on just the office, all the whole office inventory at one time. There are multiple ways you can pull up properties. So yes, if you wanted to come over here and type a property address, somebody calls in and says, I need to know all about 1234 Maple Street, you can just seek that out by individual property address. You don't have to go weeding through the entire pile of office listings. Right. Correct, correct. And this is just, like I say, one way, but we'll, we'll talk about several different ways so that you can figure out which one works best for you because when they're on the phone, they want the answer 10 minutes ago, right? Before they even called, you should have known what they wanted. <laughs> That's right. So we'll hope, hopefully come up with a couple of solutions for you. Now, where is inventory watch where you can go and see all of yours? This is, it's a little widget. It's on that home screen right there. Yeah, so initially it'll default to personal. So that'll be the count of just what is personal only to you. That's under your own public ID. And then if you switch this little drop down right there to office, that's where we're able to see this branch office's inventory. And then lastly, my firm, I'm not sure that this applies, but if you have the same designated broker that oversees more than one office, perfect. So if you click my firm, you'll see the inventory for all three of the branch offices all in one place. So again, if they get a call off a sign and it happens to be that office's listing instead of this one, you'll still be able to easily find all that information. But not other Only under your managing broker, that's right. Only under the same managing broker, okay? Personal? personal is just only your stuff. Office is just this one location, and firm is all the all of the locations but for Remax of Woodland Spring. If you, if you got out of all that, okay. It's just that little drop down right there. Hiding in plain sight is what I call that. Everything in Fusion. First big rule of thumb: don't use the back arrow, right? Second big rule of thumb: learn to hover. Third big rule of thumb, the smaller the icon, probably the more important it is. So. <laughs> Those are my big, uh, big pieces of advice for you. And most of the time, if you hover on top, just kind of set your mouse on top of something, it'll tell you what it is or what, you're, what it's expecting from you. So that's another 
again, kind of real simple way to remember or kind of navigate through it until you're used to it a little bit more. All right, so the last of our widgets is resources. And again, it's probably a little lower down on your screen than it is on mine initially. Um, anybody use the sidebar in Tempo, that little pop out, pop op open kind of menu on the left side of Tempo? You know what I'm talking about? So that is in a widget in Fusion instead of on the side. And just so everybody can see what I'm talking about. <coughs> Oh, wow, that's much bigger than the rest of the screen. So this little thing over here in Tempo, this sidebar that kind of pops open, you'll notice you've got the MLS area map, school zone finder, all those good things. All the exact same things are living in resources. And then you click MLS links, that first little folder, to kind of get, expand it and get to the fullest of stuff. Again, I'm super high tech with my stuff and things. So you just, yes, ma'am. Click MLS links, and then you'll see the other folders. Again, same list of things, stuff, same list of stuff. You have your school zone finder, image resizer, and so forth. How many of you use the school zone finder or know what it is? Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Hmm. <laughs> I can see I have to step my game up for you today. <laughs> on this brochure. All right. On this brochure, on that box that you're in, it doesn't show MLS links. It might not. That, that could be a screenshot out of the, mass, the main um, fusion system, not, not Houston specific, yeah. Sorry for the extra legwork, but that'll be great. If you add it in there, then you know where it should be. So School Zone Finder, if you click that little link right there, it opens in a new window. Most everything in Fusion opens in a new window, FYI. So um, the first couple times you use it, you'll need to set your pop-up blocker to allow all pop-ups. School Zone Finder is to kind of help you figure out which house, uh, which school rather, a particular house is zoned to. Most often in MLS, listing agents do not specify the schools. They put HISD or uh, Conroe ISD or whatever it is ISD, okay? There is a field for that, but it's not required. So if they can get away with not putting it in there, then they do. There are, there are liability issues, <laughs> and just on my own personal time, there might be some laziness issues. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, these allergies have my throat acting funny. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> so yes, mostly though, not to make a joke of it, there are some, some liability issues that could come. We do make sure that we put in big bold red letters right on HIR.com. If the schools are listed, all information should be independently verified. And of course, you will all do your realtor well, speech where you tell them. Yes. yes. It is your client's responsibility. They will ask you and they will pout and be sad when you don't give them all the answers. But technically, it's not your responsibility to get little Johnny in the violin program at blah, blah, blah elementary, right? So. One of the best lines I've ever heard, totally stole this from another instructor, I'll give Mr. Rob Cook all the credit, but it's an amazing, amazing rule to live by. Be the source of the source, not the source, okay? Be friendly, provide whatever you can, share, but then you're not liable, okay? So if you're saying, well, here's the school it's zoned to, and then that's wrong, or they change it. Katie builds a new school every five minutes, right? So, I mean, the lines change constantly. So if you're the source of the source, you can say, I'm not sure, but here's a link to their website. Here's the school report. Here's the phone number. Here's the principal's name and email. All of that can be found here through the school zone finder. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. So if we hypothetically look at Conroe, I'm not sure I'm all the way in Conroe ISD yet. I think I'm still down in spring. But um, you can see there it's got the name of the school district, the phone number for the district. Off to the far right it says detail. And that'll give me a list of every single solitary school within that district. So now I not only have the school name, but its local telephone number. And it's TEA, Texas Education Agency, rating. Acceptable is better than it sounds. It's the second best, so, <laughs> or third best. So it's not terrible. Um, 
And then off to the far right of that, yet again, I've got a detail button, and that gives me what's called the school report, and that's where I can find the principal's name, email address, and phone number as well. So once I click on that detail for the school, eventually. So Marilyn, is, yes. it, is there a link to this that a consumer could access? Yeah. Or yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, it is on HA. Mm -hmm. They can go to Conroe ISD, but there's a link to the school finder on HAR.com also. Okay, that's what I'm asking. So they can do this exact same They thing. could, so technically. To to that they could. And all they do is put the address in and it tells them what school it goes to. And Correct. The easiest is to go directly to the ISD's website, uh, which we'll do here in just a second. So here is, again, the principal's name, phone number, and then also kind of an overview of their ranking or ratings according to TEA. So student, staff, statistics, task, tax, test, scores, it's harder to say that than you might think. So again, every page that I've opened so far has a share, print, or email up at the top. So if you wanted to share it on Facebook or Twitter or something, you could do that. But kind of along the lines of the example we were just saying, if they say, well, is there availability? Can little Johnny get in the violin program? Whatever. I don't know, but here I'll email you the information right now and you can contact and find that out. So you've helped. They got their little bit of warm and fuzzy from you, but you are out of it. You're, um, providing a source of information for them to investigate uh, further what their child might need. Okay, so going back a couple of steps here to the first page where we've got our districts listed. Let's look at Spring ISD now just for kicks. So once I click the word spring, the name of the district, it opens a page that takes me out of HAR. I'm no longer in HAR. I'm now over on Spring ISD's web page, okay? Pros and cons, right? Um, if they don't provide us a link that works, we can't really help that, right? The other day I was teaching a class, don't remember where I was, and the link was broken because the district had changed their site. So sometimes you gotta do a little bit of legwork there. But right here where it says, School Finder probably is the one that's going to help you find the school, right? So it tries to lead you fairly quickly. Worst case scenario, there's a phone number right in there. I think the olden days, like two years ago, we would call people on the phone, right, instead of just only looking stuff up on the internet. 